all of us have. And I was asking the Lord last night, I said, you know, Lord, wh what do you want me to share this morning? And I really felt like two things. One was, <clears throat> you ever hear a word from the Lord? And it's like, you know, it's a, it's a word from the Lord. And uh, we were talking this morning about time frame. And it's like, Lord, I know I heard from you. I really feel like I've heard from you. And it's, this ain't playing out like what I thought. Anybody been there? And so the enemy, I think one of his biggest ploys is doubt. Seeds of doubt. He knows there are great things that are ahead. And he's trying to thwart the plans of God. That's what he does. He's a liar. And just in the garden to Eve, he just, she got deceived. Don't let him deceive you. Because I'm here this morning to tell you, I heard a word that says doubt. God's not afraid of your doubt. In fact, He gets all the glory. You need to hear that. Where you may be doubting what you heard. The enemies come against you. He's thrown it right and left. And you're thinking, did I really hear from the Lord? You did. And He will. His timing is not our timing. And He'll allow us to go through trials. That they're refining us. That It says, you know, going through the trial, what does that do? Breathes hope. He gets all the glory. Because when He shows up, nobody else is going to get the glory. Nobody. Been faithful. Done the little things. God said, man, that's, that's my boy. That's my son right there. He notices the little things, and he's faithful in all things. I can trust his heart. He's humble. That's the other word, humble. Humble. There's scripture in Mark uh, 9 and 23. And his father has a son that's uh, rolling around on the ground, foaming at the mouth. Enemies trying to throw him into the fire. This is how long has he been like this? His whole life. Your disciples tried, but they couldn't do anything. But if you can, he's talking to Jesus. If you can, he says, do you believe that I can? Most humble prayer. He says, yes, I believe that you can, but help my unbelief. That scripture ministers to me in a way that few do. And that, you know what? Jesus healed his son. And it wasn't because anything he did. He was humble enough to say, Lord, I need your help. Even in my unbelief, I need your help. You're it. No other options. Did Jesus ridicule him? No. No. He just loved him right where he was. And he healed him. So praise God. Somebody need to hear that this morning. And maybe it was just me. <laughs> but I believe that there's some people that might be fighting some pretty tough battles right now. And it might be doubt has kind of crept in. And I'm here to tell you there's hope. 
and his name is Jesus. He's our only hope, but he is faithful and he loves you right where you are and you don't have to get your act together. You don't have to have, I got all this memorized and I'm quoting this and all that kind of stuff. No, uh, you could simply come to him and say, Lord, help me in my unbelief. I want to believe everything and I, everything in that man, he wanted to believe but he'd been in a battle a long time and he was weary and he's tried everything he could do that was it because he was trying to do what he could do he was going to the right places doing the right thing wasn't seeing the end result but Jesus but Jesus come as you are doubt and all because God gets all the glory let's pray Father God I am so excited about this morning I've been excited about being here all week because I know that you're going to show up in a mighty and wondrous way when we humble ourselves before you when we Say, Lord, what do you want as we were praying this morning? Just have your way. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. And we ask that you just uh, you just wreck us. You, you just tear down anything you want to tear down. You build up anything you want to build up. Let our hearts be open to your leading and your direction. May we receive every bit of what you have for us. Nothing more and nothing less. We ask that you just show up even in a miraculous way, that there be healing in this house, that whether it's a, the mind or whether it's the body or spirit, Lord, we just have say, have your way. I thank you for Jeff and, and leading us in worship and uh, Brittany as she's going to be sharing with us. And we, we thank you for Cody and you just calling him to bring a word this morning. And Lord, we're just so excited. Just thank you for everyone that's here, Lord, that, uh, that uh, we just even sense your presence even now. And we have, we just say, have your way. We ask that you be with Pastor Nick and his family as they've uh, got activities that they're involved with and know that they're loved and that they're missed. But, uh, Lord, we just thank you that, uh, that you fill the house uh, with new friends and uh, fellowship. And uh, we just uh, rejoice uh, and give thanks. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. <laughs> I just told Brittany, remember to hit the button. I don't always remember to hit the button, but all right. Who's excited to be in the house of the Lord today? All right, well, let's get up and worship. All right. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who brings the polar with holy thunder? Who is Come on, y'all know the words. Wonder, the King of glory, the King above all kings. Let me hear you shout it out. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You lay down your life that I would be set free. Oh, 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 Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Who brings our chaos? 
who brings our chaos back into order who makes the orphan a son and daughter the king of glory the king above all kings who rules the nations who rules the nations with truth and justice shines like the sun in all of its brilliance the king of glory the king above all kings this is amazing grace this is unfailing love that you would take my place that you would bear my cross you lay down your life that i would be set free whoa jesus i sing for all that you've done for me just remember his promises <laughs> remember how he's faithful he's been faithful think about how he's been faithful and if you feel joy just speak about his faithfulness come on come on you know that he's faithful <laughs> You know that he's good. You know he's been faithful. You know that he's good. Oh, we know that you're faithful, God. We know that you're faithful, God. We know that you're faithful, God. We've seen the evidence. We've seen the evidence of your goodness. We know that you're faithful, God. We know that you're faithful, God. We know that you're faithful, God. We've seen the evidence. We've seen the evidence. We sing worthy. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Oh, oh, worthy is the king who conquered the grave. Worthy is the lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Oh, this is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place that you would bear my cross you lay down your life that i would be set free oh jesus i sing for all you've done for me all you've done for us jesus Oh, you are a faithful God. You've always been faithful. You know that you're a faithful God. You've always been faithful. You are, oh, you're a faithful God. You've always been faithful. We know that you're a faithful God. You'll always be faithful. We know that you're a faithful God. You'll always be faithful. Hmm. I feel like there's some in this room who need to 
need to sing that out in faith because they haven't seen God move the way they want, because they haven't seen the promises spoken over their lives fulfilled. So we're going to just proclaim that. And even if you don't feel that, we're going to speak that into existence. We're going to call things out that aren't as though we can see them right now with our own eyes. So we know you're a faithful God. You'll always be faithful. We know that you're a faithful God. You'll always be faithful. We know that you're a faithful God. You'll always be faithful. We know that you're a faithful God. You'll always be faithful. 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 You're always faithful. You're always faithful. Even in the chaos, even in our wonder, our wandering and our wonder, you're faithful. You'll always be faithful. I've seen the evidence of your goodness all of my days, all of my days. I see your promises in fulfillment all of my days. All of my days, I see, I see the evidence of your goodness. All of my days, all of my days, your promises, I see your promises in fulfillment. All of my days. All of my days. Because you are worthy of it all. All my praise. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things. And to you are all things. You deserve the glory. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Sing worthy. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things. And to you are all things. You deserve the glory. We sing, and all the saints and angels bow before your throne, and all the elders cast. Their crowns before the Lamb of God and sing all the saints and all the saints and 
bow before your throne all the elders all the elders cast their crowns before the lamb of god and they sing you are worthy of it all you were worthy of it all for from you are all things and to you are all things you deserve the glory you are worthy you are worthy of it all you are worthy of it all for from you are all things and to you are all things you deserve the glory sing day and night day and night day and night night and day let incense arise day and night night and day let incense arise day and night night and day let incense arise Day and night, night and day, let incense arise. Day and night, night and day, let incense arise. Day and night, night and day, let incense arise. Day and night, night and day, let incense arise. Day and night, night and day, you are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all, all my praise. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. You are worthy of it all. Just the voices. Come on. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things. And to you are all things. You deserve the glory. God. Yes, you get all the glory. Yes, you get all the glory. Because forever you will be. The Lamb upon the throne. I gladly bow my knee and worship you alone. Forever you will be the Lamb upon the throne. I gladly bow my knee and worship you, Lord. Mm. Just sing out the song that he's put on your heart this morning.
Forever you will be. Yeah. The lamp on the throne. I gladly bow my knee and worship you alone. All right, Brittany's going to come on up here, and I'm going to tune this guitar because I think the enemy is at work. Do you want to say anything about the song, Brittany? Oh. <laughs> Put her on the spot. Um, I fight this song all the time. Because <laughs> there's no other fire like Jesus. And it's caused me emotional damage. <laughs> Just put it that way. Because when you ask for that fire, he gives it. And sometimes it's too much. And so Richie called me and he said, hey, get your soundtrack ready. I said, no, I'm not doing it. <laughs> because Jesus immediately said, refiner. And I said, no, I don't, I don't want to do this. Because when you ask for it, he pours it. And I know this is where my husband's going. And I know this is what he's bringing today. And I fought it all week. But when he gives you your fire, you have to share it. And he's given it to me. So that's where we're going. <laughs> and just pray and make it through it. <laughs> if the altar's where you meet us take me there take me there oh, Jesus. if you want to free it's right here my life is here and I'll be a living sacrifice for you you're a fire the refiner I wanna be consumed I wanna be tried by fire purified you take whatever you desire. Lord, here's my life. I want to be tried by fire. Purified. You take whatever you desire. Lord, here's my life. If your glory is where it's coming. Let it fall, we want it all, Lord, your fire is consuming. Fill this place, set it ablaze, and I'll be a living sacrifice for you. You're a fire, the refiner, I want to be consumed. I want to be tried by fire, purified. You take whatever you desire. Lord, here's my life. I want to be tried by fire, purified. You take whatever you 
desire. Lord, here's my love. So clean my hands, purify my heart. I wanna burn for you, only for you. So take my life as a sacrifice. I wanna burn for you, only for you. So clean my hands, purify my heart. I wanna burn for you, only for you. So take my life as a Sacrifice, I want to burn for you, only for you. You refine the refinement, I want to be consumed. You refine the refinement, I want to be consumed. I want to be tried by fire. You're You take whatever you desire. Lord, here's my love. I want to be tried by fire. You're You take whatever you desire. Lord, here's my life. Burn me beautiful, burn me lovely, burn me righteous. Burn me beautiful. Oh Lord, please burn me. Burn me beautiful. Burn me lovely. Burn me righteous. Burn me holy. Burn me beautiful. Burn me lovely. Burn me righteous. Burn me holy. Burn me beautiful, burn me lovely, burn me righteous, burn me holy, burn me beautiful, burn me lovely, burn me righteous, burn me holy, burn me beautiful, burn me lovely, burn me righteous, burn me holy, burn me beautiful, burn me lovely. Burn me righteous, burn me holy. Good morning, good morning, good morning. 
Uh, I'd like to thank everyone for having me out. Uh, it's a true blessing and an honor to be here today in the house, uh, bringing God's Word. Uh, I'm like a messenger that was sent. I stood in the line. I stood in the wilderness. I stood in the shadows, just waiting for that Word. And when he gave me that word, I jumped onto my mule and I ran to the house as fast as possible. And the words are stretched, but not broken. How far can we be stretched before we feel like we're broken? Before we feel like everything's just fixing to fall apart? Hell in a handbasket. Everything starts to spiral out of control. Our God is a consuming fire. He's a consuming fire. His nerve, his, he, he never does anything halfway. He never leaves anything unfinished. That's why He says to me and to you, My Word will not return to me unvoid, but will accomplish what it is sent to and will prosper in that. I pray that we start to soak in the fire. Now that it is a fresh fire that starts to turn into a liquid fire. So through the, through the 70s, 80s, and early 90s, this fresh fire started to pour out amongst men. And then man-made religion started to set in where the pastors would preach their convictions onto the congregation. And what I feel, what I've seen in the spirit realm is when, when man would put his convictions on other men, it became to shackle up the men of Christ. And it sent them out of the church. I come today to bring the kingdom. The kingdom of God is at hand. It's where the true worshipers are set out. Not to condemn, but to love. Not to point judgment and right and wrong, but to bring love and forgiveness to the congregation. And, and what I tell you about this fresh fire that was set upon us, it's like a big forest fire that was going through the nation. Through Pentecost, through everything. And now I feel that we're stepping into a, a, to another rim. And that's a liquid fire. That's a fire that flows from the river. How deep do you want to get into the river? How, how much fire do you want to consume? How much fire do you want to consume? Me, I want as much as I can handle. Not to be overbeared, but as much as I can handle. Pour it on me. And then as I started to soak in this liquid fire, I seen the color green come to me in the spirit realms. So I got to looking it up, and in the Hebrews language, the color green means that the leaf will not wither. That it will not wither. And that the strength of the Holy Spirit can march forward within us and continuous in us in our daily walk. That the fire and the boldness that we bring to the pulpits, to the church, to the outer walls of this church will never let us down, but will only build us up to make us stronger as we walk in the body of Christ. And then the Holy Spirit showed me this, which blew my mind. How much more darkness would we all be in if it wasn't for the crown of thorns? It's time to start relying on His thorns. In today's time, there's so much darkness in the world. There's so much darkness. Everywhere you look, there's darkness. It's time as believers that we stand up and we grab a hold of the anointing and we start to pour it out among the nations through love and forgiveness. Not right and wrong, but through love and forgiveness. It seems to be a fact of life Here's, here, let me go back just a second. Here, here's a story about a man that he just all he wants is God. All he wants is the Holy Ghost. All he needs is a ghost. And it seems to be a fact of life that when I want to do right, I inevitably do what is wrong. 
I love to do God's will so, so far as my new nature is con concerned. But there is something else deep within me. There's something else deep within me. In my lower nature that is at war within myself. So within this person and within his walk, no matter how close he gets to God, there's something within his most inner being, the lower part of his most inner being, that holds him back, that draws him back, that keeps him from succeeding God's will. Temptations. Sin. Sin is a, a horrible thing that goes within war, within our most inner being. When we feel we're doing right, when we feel that we're doing what's of the Lord, there's this little voice that comes into us and starts to tempt us. Well, you might not be good enough. That's not, that's not what you need to be doing. You need to be doing this. To try to pull you away, to try to isolate you and separate you from your true calling, from what you're truly set out to do. The enemy is truly set there to destroy that. He is set there to destroy that. And while I'm at war within my mind, and when he wins the fight, it makes me a slave to sin that is still within me. So when the enemy sets in upon us, and when he says the things, because he knows exactly what to say to get to us, and when He says those things to us, and then we just agree to disagree with it because we don't want to fight that. Or we might not know how to fight that battle. He wins. And what that does is puts a little bit more on us. Weighs us down just a little bit more. Shakes us up a little bit more. Destroys us just a little bit more. I'm here to tell you that you're going to be set free today. You're going to be set free from the chains. You're going to be set free from the demonic bondage. The attacks you've been under. This control that you've been set in. The Holy Spirit, not me, but through the Holy Ghost, you're going to be set free in the name of Jesus. Not by me, but by Him. In my mind, I want to do God's will. I want to be His willingly servant. But instead, I find myself enslaved to sin. So you see how it is my new life that tells me to do right, but the old nature still inside of me loves to sin. No matter how much you want to do right, there's something inside of you that still wants to sin. It's time we cast it out. It's time we give it to Him. It's time we be bold in our walk. It's time that we go to Walmart and we don't run from that when the Holy Spirit starts to speak to us. But we run to that. Not run from it, but run to it. Be a willing vessel outside the four walls. That's what's going to bring the kingdom closer to heaven. We want to try to figure out how to get to heaven. Why don't we try to figure out how to get heaven here? And that step in with outside the inner walls and head it out. Two by two by two is how we're sent. Thank God it has been done by Jesus Christ that has set me free. Thank God that sinful nature within, that's with inside of me has died through God, Jesus Christ. And I thank Him daily for that. I thank Him daily for that. I thank Him daily for giving me what He's given me. The wife, my children, my family. I thank God for that. And I could not do it without them and without Him. Many people, including Christians, are bound by the power of sin, various kinds. Fear, legalism, demonic influences. Jesus Christ is available to set you free from the bondage. Spiritually, emotionally, and socially. It's all kinds of it. All kinds of bondage. And He's here today to set you free from the bondage that you're under. I go to uh, John 4, 
23 and 24, and I will also be in Matthew 6, uh, Matthew 10, 6 through 9. But John 4, 23 reads, uh, and I'm in the NASB version, but an hour has come, and it is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Such, a, such people, for the Father seeks to be His worshiper. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. There's no more fakeness. There's no more let's fake it till we make it. It's time to stand up and be bold in the body of Christ and set out to do what He wanted us to do all along. And that's to spread the love and joy of His Almighty throughout this nation. Not within the four walls, but without the side of these four walls. Go and do and seek. And rely on the Holy Ghost to give you the light. Because He will. He's going to give you the light. Sorry about that. That's right. An hour has come. Can somebody say an hour has come? An hour has come. An hour has come to be set free from loneliness. Feeling lonely. Fear of being around people. How can we have a fear of being around people if the Holy Ghost wants us to go be around people? I set you free right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Fear of telling others about Christ. Fear of condemnation from God by having wrong thoughts. Give it to Him. Give that to Him. Sinful habits. Doubt about the effect, effectiveness of prayer. Doubts of the effectiveness of prayer. Holy Spirit, I come to You and I give You this. And I give You that. And I give You my children. I give You my grandchildren. But then the sinful nature comes into where you want to take some of that back. No, you can't handle that much. So I'm going to take it back and I'm going to put it back on my shoulders and I'm going to carry it with me. And I'm going to continue to carry it with me because you're just not big enough to handle all my problems. That's the enemy talking to you. That's the enemy talking to you. God wants you to take everything and leave it at His feet. And when He says, when you leave it at my feet, it is finished. I'm not a microwavable God. It's going to be in my timing. In my timing. Pressure to copy the customs of this world. Pressure to fill customs of this world. So since Joe's doing it, I guess I'll need to do it. Since Frank is doing it this way, I guess I'll need to do it this way. It's time we stand up and we be the leaders of this nation. Not a follower anymore. Not a follower of the darkness. Not a follower of the politicians. But the follower of Jesus Christ and to set out to do His will. To do what we should have done all along. Before this sinful habit was cast down upon man. Before men tried running man out of the church. It's time we bring the body of Christ back. It's time we bring the body of Christ back. Financial bondage, demonic oppressions, legalistics, the legalistic expectations of others. Do not accept or expect anything out of someone else that you can expect out of yourself. Well, if he can't do it, then I can't do it either. That's a lie from hell. That's a lie. You can do all things through Christ that gives me strength. You can do all things through Christ that gives me strength. I come to rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I pray that Christ will set you free far beyond His expectations. 
as we study and apply the principles of God's words and then lend it without expecting anything in return. That's the hard part. That's the hard part. The hard part is going and giving willingly and not expecting anything in return. It took me a long time to, to get a hold of that, to grasp that. I come from a very poor family, didn't have much. Then when I start becoming a man and an adult, I start expecting these things from people like they owed me something. That was the enemy trying to deter me from my calling, from my walk. I go to the cherubim, I go to the, the heavenly realms, and I sit there and I just bask in His presence. And I ask Him, Holy Spirit, I'm here for You. And for You only. It's not about me. It's not about the selfishness. It's about You, God. It's all about You, Son. It's all about you. And then he gives me Matthew. Go to Matthew, he says. 10, 6 through 9. And this is what I have for you to do as I'm in the cherubim. And he's explaining what he has for me. But rather go to the lost sheep, the house of Israel. And as you go, preach saying the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the leapers, cast out demons freely. You received, so freely you give. He said, I give this to you. I gifted you with some things. I've gifted you with healing. I've gifted you with fire. I've gifted you with the tongues. He said, now I set you out. To go and give my word. To go and give my word boldly. Not to be afraid. Not to be ashamed. But to go and speak my word boldly. Within the four walls. With outside the four walls. To cast out things. To set things apart. To bring fire and anointing to the pulpit. Where did the fire and the anointing go? Where did it go? It's been lost in the darkness. It's been lost in the darkness. Through TV. Through the news. It's everywhere. It's spreading like wildfire. It's everywhere. It's time we stand up as a body of Christ and not live for that. And not live for that. You want to hear some good news? Get on your face and pray out to the Holy Ghost and ask Him. He's going to give it to you. That's about the only good news we're going to get. That's about all we're going to get. Is from Him. Because what the world's teaching today is darkness. What the world's teaching our kids today is how to live in darkness. It's okay to sin. It's okay to go out. It's okay to do that. You, if you don't want to go to church, you don't have to. Because you know what? we got a, a TV screen here that we could just watch it from home. My Bible says, don't forsake the gathering of the brethren. It's not to keep us at our home, but it's to build us up. Iron sharpens iron. My sword will sharpen your sword. Your sword will sharpen his sword. Her sword will sharpen her sword. So if we can get further and further and further away, no wonder our swords are getting dull. <laughs> no wonder our swords are getting weakened. It's because the separation of, in the demonic realm is through politicians that say it's okay. It's okay. Boys can love boys. Women can love women. It's okay. It's okay. No, it's not okay. It's not okay. It's not okay. So go to the lost sheep of Israel. I start to look around. Holy Spirit, where's the lost sheep? Show me where to go. Show me where to go. He takes me to this little place in Denton. It's a, a homeless shelter now, but it used to be the dog pound. And, and when I walk in there, it's just total chaos of darkness, madness. Through the, through the people coming in there, through the people working there, 
It's just a, a world of darkness there. And, it, and it's funny how the Holy Spirit can use you because when I walked in there, it's like this light. It's like this little fire begin to kindle over here in this corner. And the longer I stood in there and the longer I started to talk and love on people, the brighter that started getting. The warmer that started getting. The hotter it started getting. This guy comes in. He says, I don't know Jesus, but I would love to know Jesus now. And I said, well, it's simple, you know. It's simple. So Jason got with him and he prayed over him. And these people just started coming out of the woodworks. There's a lot of woods around there. There's maybe five or ten people when we got there. But about 20, 30 minutes into being there, there was about... 200 people there. And the Holy Spirit told me, He said, go outside and look. I need you to go outside right now and look. So as I, I'm running through the door, I run outside and I look, and these people are coming out of the woods. Filthy. Nasty. Dirty. Didn't he have a care in the world about tomorrow or even today. They were just happy to be alive. I just started loving on them. I started hugging on them. Letting them feel the anointing like they've never felt it before. That's, that's where we need to be. That's where we need to be going. Is to find the lost sheep and bring them home. But not tell them how to get to heaven but how to bring heaven to earth. How to bring heaven to earth in His kingdom. In His kingdom. Go preaching saying the kingdom of God is at hand. Let me tell you, in today's time, the kingdom of God is at hand and we need His hand more than ever. We need His hand more than ever. We need Him to cover us in His grace and in His mercy and His love. We need Him to shore us up and make us strong. Because right now the enemy is strong. And he will come and try to attack you in any way. If he can't get to me, he's going to come to my wife. If he can't get to my wife, he's going to go to my kids. If he can't get to my kids, he's going to my mother, to my father, to my sisters. He's going to try to attack any way he can. So we have to be shored up. We have to be the conduit through him to keep the strength alive and burning to keep that kindling burning because if we turn our back just for a second that kindling is going to dim down next thing you know you're getting ran over trampled stomped on like lord what happened he said i never left you nor forsaken you he said i've been right here waiting on you to come home i've been right here waiting for you to come home witnessing Let's talk about witnessing for a little bit. Witnessing is the act of telling others about what Christ has done for you. The things you've experienced, and in the context of Christianity, it involves testifying to others for the forgiveness, love, deliverance, power, and peace, knowing the kingdom of God. And God, there's nothing better than you. So, as I was talking to them earlier this morning, it was about 13 years ago I started my journey, my walk. Uh, I'll be honest, I, was a, I thought I was an atheist. Um, only time I was allowed to go to church was either a funeral or a wedding. Other than that, you stay away from those places. Do not go. Uh, it's bad news in there. So, I mean... As the generational curses were poured into me of not knowing, I just went with it. I uh, started dabbling in a lot of drugs at a young age. I started partying, drinking, uh, started rodeoing, getting into bull riding, and uh, started in my life just started spiraling out of control. And through tragedies and things that would happen to me where my life should have been taken in an instance. It seemed like I got saved every time. Like every time I put my life in danger, I would get saved. 
like, what in the world? Well, like, I should be dead right now. Like, I don't understand what's going on because I didn't know Jesus. I didn't even know there was a Jesus. And uh, I was coming back from a rodeo about 13 years ago. Well, no, about, yeah, it was about 13 years ago. I was coming back from a rodeo. And I uh, seen this little barn on the side of 2450. And uh, the Holy Spirit, now that I know it's the Holy Spirit, I just felt something inside of me saying, hey, you need to get out of this car and you need to run to that barn as fast as you can. And I'm not telling you again. So I'm like, hey, man, did y'all hear that? I mean, we're drinking whiskey, smoking weed. I mean, the whole bit from Oklahoma all the way back to Texas. Partying like rock stars. That was our motto. Uh, to be an outlaw. And then I heard that voice again. Like, hang on, this is really freaking me out now, man. Like, I don't know what's going on, but did y'all not hear that? They're like, no, man, you must be high because we didn't hear nothing. I said, well, I don't know what's going on, but y'all got to pull over right here. Pull over in the bar ditch and let me out. Okay, if you say so, but we're not turning around and coming back and getting you. I said, that's fine. I'll find a ride, whatever. You ain't got to come back and get me. So now, my friends take off, and I'm sitting in this bar ditch. Just now, what do I do? Do I thumb it all the way back to the house? What do I do? He said, I told you to go to the barn. I'm like, oh, okay, here we go. So I'm walking down this driveway. It's a pretty good driveway to walk down, not knowing nothing. And as I open the door to this barn, it's actually a church. Walk in, just sit right by the back wall because I'm not getting any further. Uh, the pastor points me out at the back of the crowd. He tells me, hey man, you're lost and you're looking for some love. He said, here's the keys to my truck. You go start my truck and sit in it. I'll be with you after service. So I go start his pickup up. I'm sitting in the AC. <laughs> and I'm just confused at this point. Not knowing what's going on. And uh, he comes out. He introduces himself as Richie Johnson. I love that man dearly. He's been mentoring me. He's been discipling me. He's been leading and guiding me as Jesus would lead and guide you. He said, I know you're lost, and it's okay. He said, I know you're high, I know you're drunk, but it's okay. He said, there's a God that loves you unconditionally. And I'd like to talk to you about Him sometime if you got a chance. And when you have time. And me being a jerk, sarcastic. I guess there's no better time than now. I'm, I'm stuck here. I ain't got a ride. I ain't got no friends. They done left me. I'm here. So we went to eat. And he just started pouring his love into me that I've never felt before. Uh, a love of an unconditional love, an agape love that I never felt in my life. And the love that He started pouring into me, He started showing me that there's a God who's real. And there's a God that's still alive today. That when He died and rose from His tomb, He walked out of that thing. He left the, he left the clothes there, but He's gone. And He's in the heavenly realms and He watches over each and every one of us. And if it wasn't for that day, there's no telling where I would be at right now. But then He said, there's one thing I'm going to need you to do. And I said, okay, tell me. Because there's, there's like eight, eight or ten of us sons that He's discipling and that He's ministering to. And He said, I'm going to need you to get on this potter's wheel. And I'm going to need you to stay on this potter's wheel. No matter how far you grow, no matter how mature you get in your walk, you're never going to leave this potter's wheel. It's going to spin around and around and around. It's going to throw you off every once in a while. He's going to bang you up every once in a while. But then He's going to pick you back up and He's going to start putting your pieces back together. And when He gets you on this wheel, and He's starting to mold you, and that miry clay, you know, that clay that you just put a little bit of water on and start to shape it. 
He said, when your time comes, the pedal will be to the metal. And you are to set forth the kingdom of God and only deliver what He wants you to deliver. You're not a performance. You're going to walk in the true anointing. And you're going to give the congregation and the people behind the screens exactly what the Holy Spirit wants you to give them. So my brothers, they started going out and doing things while I'm just sitting back at the house, not getting to go nowhere. Not really understanding and dealing with my flesh, the, the inner being, the lower part of it. Like, huh, just not good enough. You're just not good enough. All your other brothers are out doing their own thing now. You've been here the longest. and <laughs> Look at you, you're still sitting on the back burner. But what I did not realize was while sitting on that back burner, I started to catch on fire. While I was in that dark cave, I started to see a bunch of bright lights. The thing that has me holding on and holding back was that anointing, true anointing. The true anointing and the fire. They said, when you're ready to go, they'll be ready to receive. I said, do what? He said, the fire you're going to carry and the anointing you're going to put behind the pulpit, if you go before time, you're going to scare the congregation and you're going to fall apart. He said, so you cannot go until God says you're ready to go. And he said, as you're submitted under me, and there's a lot of things that when... When men hear the word submission, we want to run from that. We want to back away from it. But in the, in, the, in the original language, submission means to come under. To come under that person. And I grab that. And I understand that. And when I come up under Him, He has all authority within me. And He leads me. And He will not let me down. So I know i got to put my trust into Pops as He leads and guides me. And now that it is my turn... I'm only going to do the will of the Father. I'm only going to do the will of the Father. That's it. I'm not asking for anything in return, but I want to give to y'all what He's given to me the last 13 years. And that's fire, that's anointing, that's healing. And that's just a goodness of the love of God. The goodness and the love of the Holy Spirit. The goodness and the love of the Holy Spirit. I would like y'all to, to do me a favor when y'all start to pray tonight in y'all's in y'all's prayer time. Y'all are gonna see some glory that y'all haven't seen in a long time. He says, We will see glory in the spirit realm. Live the abundant life and walk in it. It's time we start to live the abundant life. We ain't gonna let no sickness hold us back. We're not going to let somebody else's words hold us back any longer. It's time we walk in the abundance of life and we grab onto that. When we get into the spirit realm, we soak in His presence. We bask in the anointing. And we slow down just long enough to hear His voice and to see what He has for us. You know, I would go and I would... I'm pretty loud and I'm always on the go. My mind's wired 440, so I'm, i got a lot of things going on. And I w it was hard for me to hear His voice because it's so subtle and so soft that the birds have to hush their singing to hear His Word. So as I get into prayer now, I, I find myself slowing down to listen. Because if I overtalk him, I'm going to miss his word. I'm going to miss what he had for me. And then I'm thinking, Holy Spirit, where are you at? I done came, gave you the word, and I'm gone. You never even heard me. You never even heard what I had to say. So be slow to speak in your prayers. Because the answers are right around the corner. There's been a, there's been a shift in the season. And those that are not willing to be a part of the shift are going to wither and fade away. But those that are willing 
to move forward in the next season, the grass will never the grass will never wither or fade away. The grass will never wither nor fade away. For like spring, it will flower upon us. And the, so, the seeds that are being sowed in this church is going to reap a good harvest. It's going to reap a good harvest. The controlling power that has been put on this place, I cast it out right now in the name of Jesus. It's not welcome. It's not welcome. Freely is given, but much is required. Freely is given, but much is required. It's required of us to fall upon our face and cry out to the Holy Spirit. It's for us to stand in the gap for others when they can't stand in the gap by themselves. It's for us to be a shoulder for them to lean on, for them to cry on. And it's for us to shore them up and build them up in Jesus Christ. Would you go with me in prayer? <clears throat> Father God, we come to You today, Lord, just thanking You, Father God, for everything You've done. I've been a conduit. I brought exactly what You wanted me to bring, Father. And now in closing, Father God, I just pray that there's peace among this congregation. That all doubt and negativity be destroyed out this door right now in the name of Jesus. I cast out all burdens all loneliness. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Expectations of others, I cast it out right now in the name of Jesus. Sinful habits, I break them down and put them in the strongholds in the name of Jesus. Fear of death, financial bondage, demonic oppression, Feeling the guilt of expectations of others, I cast it out right now in the name of Jesus. That there be a laughter come upon you, that it be set in and set free in the name of Jesus. That you may come and come and give life more abundant. And that you just start to laugh and you just start to praise and cry out. Abba, Abba, Father, he said, my anointing is here and is dripping from the seedlings. He loves you unconditionally. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you all.
we're going to give it to you, Father. We're going to lay it at your feet, O oh Lord. We're going to claim the healing in your time.